Mother, my dear, Sasha has lost the cards again. I have nothing to live on, I wear nothing. And you also took away my earrings with scarlet stones, for which I grumble against you a lot. Imagine that this is how, according to the official biography of the brilliant Russian poet, could write to his parents Natalia Pushkin, maiden name Vontarova. Surely you have heard or read about the fact that the cursed earrings of Princess Meshchersky were almost the only jewelry of poor Nahili. The very wife of Alexander Sergeyevich, who all their life together allegedly suffered from a poor and hopeless life. How could there be any jewelry if they had to patch up dresses that had seen the light of day? Yes, in some of the letters of Natalia Nikolaevna Pushkin, indeed, there are complaints about the player Pushkin. Allegedly, his penny salary does not cover all the expenses and what to leave the children. But if you compare the facts, it seems to me that not everything is not as simple as it seems. Did the wife of the first poet of the Russian Empire did not have beautiful jewelry? And were the Pushkins really so poor? To answer these questions will help us historical facts and portraits of Natalia Goncharova, who was so loved by painters. When Natalie's mother, her name, by the way, was Natalia Avanovna, handed her daughter lovely gold earrings with burning, like a purple sunset, rubies, our heroine admired the jewelry very briefly. Soon Natalia Goncharova Sr. demanded a precious gift back, arguing that Pushkin de Moth, player and weasel, and soon, as her motherly heart feels, will squander the last, including earrings with rubies, God knows. Again, as the facts of Natalie's biography say, Maimon hinted to her daughter that she was unworthy of such a valuable thing. Of course, Pushkin's wife was both grieved and offended. Then the young beauty complained to her husband. He, once again, playing cards, demanded his opponent to put on the line a luxurious diamond necklace. And, praise the heavens, won this time. Rushing home, Alexander Sergeyevich consoled his oblique Madonna when he put this jewelry masterpiece around her fragile neck. Mother Natalia Ivanovna, being a lady of fine mental organization, scolded Sasha, but immediately returned the confiscated gift. Yes, I almost forgot to tell you why Pushkin called Natalie his side Madonna, which at first she sulked a lot, since the poet was that joker and a great lover of a sharp word whom the nicknames given to them could not hide neither close nor distant. Here an affectionate name for his wife, suffering from a slight squint, was ready immediately after the wedding. Look how many wonderful portraits of Natalia Pushkina have survived to our days, perhaps the best known to us, the one where Natalie Goncharova is still young and fresh as a May lily at the valley, and wears delightful pendant earrings with bright blue sapphires or other stones. Another 19th century painter depicted the famous brunette with a wreath on her head. Yes, scarlet roses get our attention but expensive diamond earrings, albeit modest in size, and a choker with blue satin ribbons are no less striking accents in Natalie's image than the buds in her hairstyle. We see a gorgeous pendant on the choker necklace, an impressively sized pendant brooch with a rectangular sapphire and an impressive sapphire draw. Plus, the pendant is surrounded by a scattering of the purest diamonds. If Pushkina actually owns such a piece of jewelry, then we can assume that the couple did not live as poorly as the beauty herself wrote. There is another portrait of Pushkin Lenskaya, but it was written after the death of the famous poet, when Natalie became the wife of Lieutenant General Peter Petrovich Lansky. Perhaps with her second marriage, Natalia's jewelry box became even more enriched. A necklace with a sky gold ribbon and a diamond brooch. Not at all small earrings with charming diamonds. The cold and sad beauty of the woman was emphasized by the beauty of jewelry. What do you think of the unusual portrait of the heroine with a ruby half career? The swan's neck is free of jewelry, but the purple thread on her forehead, the jewelry with a ruby or spinal, in her hair and a pair of pendant earrings with the same juicy bunches of stones tells us her own story of a married lady. The one that easily won men's hearts, suffered from her husband's crushes and clearly had a considerable collection of jewelry. However, according to researchers of Alexander Sergeyevich's life, much in the biography of genius corrected after his death, and in Soviet times a lot of effort. As modern historians write, the spouses could deliberately hide income and material values. First, so that the fees from the state were not so great, and secondly, so as not to attract undue attention. Since Pushkin had ill-wishers, 
It is thought that in fact he not so rarely, but rather, even often gifted his beloved oblique Madonna jewelry presentations. He fell in love with others, but loved only one, the beautiful Matelia Nikolaevna.